partners have been linked to be problematic for people who are sensitive, for example, people who have got uh, asthma and uh, other respiratory conditions, it's important to be careful with the fabric conditioners. So soft is uh, non-allergenic for most people who are sensitive. And uh, so I find it to be a, a very nice one. Again, it is concentrated, so a little goes a long, long way. So then um, the next is Lemon Glow, which is our polish. It is a water-based polish and uh, we use it for most surfaces uh, for polishing as well as for protecting our furniture. It does not leave an oily or chalky residue on when we apply it. And uh, it's quite simple to use. You simply apply some on a damp cloth and then we use it to polish. And after a few minutes, you polish off with a soft cloth and uh, you are done. So it works to, pro to clean, protect, and add shine to our furniture. So you can use it on wood, most surfaces, and uh, even on leather. Then um, the next one is Carpet Glow. Carpet Glow is our carpet cleaning soap. And it's uh, also concentrated once again. Uh, we can use it for cleaning carpets as well as mirrors and chrome surfaces. It's, uh, it's um, wh what you do is that you mix it about one to 40 and then you agitate it to make a foam. And it is the foam which is used for cleaning the carpet. You apply the foam on the carpet and you leave it to dry, then you vacuum and then you have a, a clean carpet that way. It can also be used with carpet cleaning machines, but in that case, you follow the instructions on the machine. So those are some of the home care products that I wanted to talk about. I would encourage uh, all of us to use our home care for the, their effectiveness, their economy, as well as the fact that they, they are part of detoxifying our, our living environment. Remember we talked about detox last week? So our home care is an extension of ensuring that our home environment is uh, non-toxic, at least the toxins that would come from our cleaning agents. So I see my minutes are few. I just wanted to touch on a few questions that I received from um, you and thank you very much for uh, asking questions. As you know, we always do our best to, to reply. One person wanted to know about tumors. Of course, if someone has got a tumor, my first recommendation is to see a doctor to find out whether it is uh, benign or not. And then from the supplement side, what we recommend is phytodefense and omega-3 salmon oil. On the personal side, we encourage the person with tumors to clean up their diet and to increase their intake of fresh fruits and vegetables. Then the next question was about uh, eczema in an infant. And eczema are the skin problems that you, uh, we, we tend to appear that uh, a person may have a skin irritation that then becomes dry and the skin starts appearing cracked. And uh, in an infant, of course, what we recommend is VitaGuard, NutriShake, and VitaSquares. And uh, also, we, we inform them that sometimes the triggers of eczema are in the foods. So, for example, some little ones are allergic to cow's milk or to wheat or even to eggs. So uh, another thing you can advise a person whose child is suffering from eczema is to try food elimination so that they can identify the possible triggers of the skin problem. Mm, then another question was about ulcers. Uh, these are internal ulcers, I think, either stomach or um, you know, other parts of the gut. And uh, again, my first recommendation there would be for them to see a doctor because some of the ulcers respond quite well to antibiotics. And uh, on our side from Neolife, we recommend to them to use zinc, which I think we know from uh, many, many times that I've mentioned and that you already know. Zinc helps in the healing of internal wounds. Uh, we also recommend acidophilus, which is very excellent for uh, our, the workings of our gut, as well as Calmax. 
and to drink, they can have aloe vera juice, aloe vera plus, which helps to, is a tonic for the gut that will soothe their, their systems. Then um, I think the last one, because the time has got away from me there, someone asked about hair loss or alopecia, which is related to hormones. I think as a, an older lady that is uh, going through menopause and has been having some hair loss. And with that one, uh, we recommend that uh, from a Neolife side, vitamin B complex, herbal feminine uh, complex, and also better guard. In addition to that, we advise them to avoid harsh hair care products. They can use some of our milder hair care products like the mild shampoo from Neolife. And uh, they should also avoid tight hairstyles because some of our hair styles like the braiding can be very tight and can contribute to hair loss or make it worse, especially once it is underway. And then also any chemical applications on the scalp can worsen the condition. So the, the supplements are vitamin B complex, herbal feminine and beta guard. So I think that uh, I will leave you with that for today. Thanking you very much for your patience with our glitch there, but also encouraging you to keep on now that 2021 is underway. I really recommend that we go out and uh, look for people to tell about our business so that we can make the, our country, our region, our continent a healthier, wealthier and happier place. This is quite possible because you and I all know whether you are a brand new distributor or you have been in the business for very many years that our business is a pleasure to do. And the success in our business means that we have helped other people to improve their life in one way or another. Thank you very much. Let me hand you over to Pascal now who has joined me and uh, encourage you to take out your notebook so that you listen and uh, learn from what he has to share with you this evening. Thanks very much and good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you. I think that the, the, the cleaning products, sometimes we underestimate how much useful they are because every single home use cleaning products. So I would encourage you the notes that uh, you've written while Betty was talking. What I want to discuss now, those products that you've heard about, we want to turn them into PV. Why do we do this business? Each of us has got a different reason for doing the business. Each of us has a, a, a reason why we're doing it. We've got a different dream. We've got a different goals. Uh, I think last week we talked about a dream chart. Put your dream chart on the wall. But how do we achieve those dreams? How do we achieve those goals we've set for ourselves? How do you reach the income level that we, we want in the business? We do that by moving products from near life to different customers. That is the bottom line. If there are no products moving from the near life through you to customers, we are not doing any business. So in this session, I want to discuss with you two things. One, how to build or to move PV either for personal use or to customers. And number two is building a team. Because really, if you want to really earn a lot of money in this business, you have to build a large team. If you'll allow me, I want to share the screen with you. Um, okay. All right. Just let me put it on the slideshow. Okay, so to become successful in this business, long term, you need three things to succeed. The first, you need to have a burning desire. What does that mean? You need to have a desire in your heart and in your mind that nobody can discourage you from doing this business. What I know is that from my own experience is that there are very many people who are going to discourage you while on your, you're on your path to becoming successful in this business. And to be able to overcome that, you need to develop a burning desire in your soul, in your heart. And this will happen when the business moves from your heart, sorry, from your mind to your heart. When that happens, 
you're going to be successful. The second thing is being teachable. The reason why we have these Thursday meetings is so that you, we can learn uh, how to build this business. And for me and Betty, during the week, I get questions from distributors, I observe, I listen to things. We also learn new things about the business because if you say that you've learned the business enough, that's the beginning of the decline of your business. So there is, you cannot say that I've learned everything in the business. The third thing about our business, you need to work hard. You need to concentrate on what we call income producing activities. Now let's talk about building PV. For those of you who are new in the business, PV means point value. Point value is a measure of the value of the product because New Life operates in more than, <clears throat> excuse me, New Life operates in more than uh, 50 countries around the world the company decided to put PV or point value to a product so that the, the measurement of business volume is standard throughout the world. I think Betty spoke to you about some of our cleaning products, for example, LDC one liter. LDC one liter is 10 PV. Let's talk about your own personal use. Every home, whatever, wherever you are, you use cleaning products in your home, either to wash dishes, the bathroom, the kitchen, the toilet, the carpet, the anything. So I've just so chosen LDC. Let's say you buy one liter LDC. One liter LDC is 10 PV. And then the product that every person should be using is tree and then because tree and then is what helps our cells absorb nutrients. It's the foundation. In fact, when New Life started, this is one of the first products that New Life developed. That was all the way in 1958. So tree and forms the foundation of our business and a 60 capsule uh, tree and then is 17 PV. Now, because of COVID <clears throat> that is really giving people a challenge around the world, we recommend that every home should have vitamin C, chelated zinc, okay? Now chelated zinc is uh, 11 PV. Then for children, Vita squares, Vita squares is a multivitamin and it has three and then in it is 13 PV. Okay, there's a double count of uh, zinc there because zinc, if you notice that in South Africa, in uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, zinc is always getting out of stock. Why? Because the public need a lot of zinc. Okay, so if you add up the personal PV for home use only, it's about 75 PV. That is the personal use. It could be more, it could be less, but let's assume that the personal PV you use is 75 PV. The next thing you do, remember that when we had a, a session about a week ago or two weeks ago, two things you need to teach all your team members, how to retail products and how to recruit. Retailing products means selling products or servicing customers with the product and you make a small profit. Now, I, I get about three, four conditions that are very common in any country you live in, whether you're in South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, these following conditions are very common. Number one, high blood pressure. A lot of people have high blood pressure. What products do we recommend for high blood pressure? We recommend uh, omega-3 and lipotropic. You can add garlic, but I, I just chose two basic products, omega-3, 60 capsules, and lipotropic agent. The PV for these two products is 24. And then if you meet uh, customers with arthritis, we recommend Calmac and omega-3. Now remember, arthritis can be two types, either osteoarthritis, which is bone-related, or rheumatoid arthritis, which is related to our immune function. Okay, in this case, I'm just talking about osteoarthritis, which is related to our bones. And we recommend two products, chelated Calmag and omega-3 salmon, <clears throat> which is 60 capsules. Those two is 27 PV. Diabetes, diabetes has become an epidemic. In South Africa, they estimate that 3 million people have diabetes. Okay, so for diabetes in any country that you are doing business, the best product you can recommend is the botanical balance. And botanical balance is 36 PV. Then COVID-19, COVID-19, two foundational products that we recommend is vitamin C and chelated zinc. A vitamin that is important in dealing with COVID is vitamin D. 
if your customer has challenges with budget, remember you can get vitamin D from the sun. So the two essential products for COVID-19 is vitamin C and chelated zinc. And these two gives you 20, uh, 24 PV. So if you want to build good customer base, get customers in each of, in each of these categories I've mentioned, two customers. If you get two customers, the total PV is 222. So 222 plus 75 gives you 397. So you're able to build up a personal PV of at least 397 PV if you pay attention to your customers. If you pay attention to what people talk about, if you pay attention to what uh, people complain about, you will find that in every single day, you're likely to meet somebody with high blood pressure. You're likely to meet somebody with arthritis. You're likely to meet somebody with diabetes, with COVID-19, and then include all the other products, skincare products, other cleaning products. It's quite easy, I think, to build a personal PV of 397. Think about this. If you've got a team of 100 people and each is doing about 390, so let's say 300 PV, that is 30,000 PV already. That's a two ruby director volume, all right? So building PV depends on two things, number one, you need to have product knowledge. Number two, you need to listen. Listen to customers, listen to what they are saying, listen to what they are complaining about. That gives you an idea of what our customers are looking for. In fact, for me, the reason why I find our business extremely effect effective and efficient is that people always buy for some, from somebody they trust and know. So if you can give your customers correct information, it is likely that they want, when, when they want to spend money, they will call you and ask for products, all right? So that is about building your personal PV, product use and customers. The next thing I would like to discuss with you is building a team. Building a team is the core of our business. If you really want to succeed in this industry, you have to build a team. And how do you build a team? You build a team by speaking to people, all right? Now, <clears throat> what are the ways that you need to contact people? First of all, any of you who has a phone, there are at least 100 people on your phone book. Could be more, could be less. In fact, last week I was speaking to a friend of mine from Nairobi, and I asked her, how many people do you have on your phone book? She told me 8,000. So, if you're new in the business, or if you've been old in the business, or you are just getting started, in your phone book, you have at least 100, 200, 300 people. And those are the people you need to start talking to about our business, all right? How do you speak to them? By learning to ask the right questions. Because when you ask the right question, you're going to get an answer. And you need to know the difference between an open-ended question or a closed-ended question. I'll give you an example. A close-ended question is, um, do you know somebody who wants to make extra money? The answer to that question is yes or no. But you can ask the same, you seek the same information and ask, who do you know that wants to make extra money? That question prompts the prospect to start thinking about different people. That is a question that you cannot answer yet you cannot answer yes or no. You can answer by saying, um, I know so and so, I know so and so, I know and so and so. So you need to learn how to ask open-ended question. A question does not, does not require a yes or no answer, all right? The other, the other way you can ask, uh, ask it, um, I'd like to show you some information if you're keen to earn extra money. When can I send you the information? That is an open-ended question. So ask questions that prompt your prospects to give you either an explanation or permission to speak to them about our business. So learn to ask the right question. Are you open to look at a business that will earn you extra money? Or <clears throat> uh, would, you, would you know somebody who is interested in making extra money working part-time? That is a question that will elicit a response from your prospect. If they do, tell them, okay, I'm going to send you some information, have a look and let's chat after you've watched it. Do you think you're going to check the information today or tomorrow? 
or ask them for a time when they're going to look at the information so that you can continue the discussion. Now, how do you contact people? There are several ways. Number one, through social media posts, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, those are different ways you can uh, get in touch with people to ask them about or to ask people if they're interested in making extra money. Another one is uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very powerful tool for looking for prospects who are looking for this kind of business. So use social media posts. The next one, new contacts. New contacts are people you meet on a, on, on a daily basis. I mean, today you must have met somebody whom you didn't know yesterday. That is the nature of life. Because human beings are social beings. We interact or become who we are as a result of interacting with people. Okay, so build new contacts daily. Number three, chats. It could be Facebook's messenger. It could be WhatsApp. It could be uh, talking on the phone, whatever means use the chats to get in touch with people. One-on-one -on -one calls. One-on-one -on -one calls is if you're calling somebody directly and speaking to them about the business. It could be face-to-face, -face, it could be by phone, it could be by uh, Zoom, whatever it is. Learn to do one-on-one -on -one conversations to, ex to expose people to the business. Number five is three-way calls. What is a three-way call? Three-way call is when you are, if you are new in the business, your upline leader will arrange to call, will call your prospects and connect you to the same line. What is the idea behind it? The idea is for you to listen to the way your, your upline leader explains the business on the phone. That is why it's called a three-way calls. And th I found that three-way calls are very powerful because the new person learns what questions pr prospects ask, learns what the upland leader, the way upland leader explains the business and also learns how to do it themselves. All right. The sixth way to build, to build your business or to build a team is presentations, Facebook, Zoom, videos, one-on-ones. All these are means for you to get in touch with prospects so that you can expose the business. Remember, our business only grows when you expose the business to new faces, all right? Number seven is follow-ups. This is very critical. When you've shown the business to a new person, make sure you follow up either the same day or the next day. Why? Because after 48 hours, they might have forgotten about you or the initial excitement may have gone down or something else may have cross their path and they don't remember very little of what you tell them. So follow up is very important. And remember, the average person will say yes to the business on the fourth, the fifth or the sixth time you are, you are contacting them about the business. So you need to have a schedule or you need to have a system that you follow up on your prospects on what they have done. And then a very important aspect, which is called sharpening the saw is personal development. You need to spend time listening to good tapes, good CDs, listening to uh, YouTube videos, reading books. This you have to do on a daily basis. Why? Because every single day there is negative information coming from the media, coming from negative thinking people, people are complaining about life. There is always negative things going around. And from my studies about negative, it takes 11 positive, uh, 11 positive sayings to override one negative comment. What does that tell you? That a lot is stuck against you in order to avoid being negative. That is why you constantly need to be reading good books, listening to good CDs, speaking to positive people, just watch the people you, don't allow just anybody to speak into your, your life because some of them have no, have no use or have no goodwill to ensure that you, you succeed. Because remember, misery like company, all right? So spend time developing yourself. And just as, a, as, as an indication, you're going to face the following challenges in your business. One is discouragement. Discouragement is, you see this business, the amount of money you invest to start is not a lot of money. In Kenya, it's 7,300. 
In Nigeria, it's 22,000 uh, Naira. Tanzania is about 142. Uh, in Tanzania, about 243. Different countries got different amounts. It's not a lot of money, but the biggest challenge that people face in our business is discouragement. First, from negative thinking people. Two, from news. Three, trying to recall the past failure or when you, when you, somebody tells no to you, you, fit, you take it personally and you begin to conclude that this business doesn't work, okay? So discouragement is a real challenge that you face in this business. How do you overcome it? Put, staying positive. How do you become positive? Doing your self-talk, reading positive books and uh, listening to positive information. The second challenge you're going to face in our business is reinventing the wheel. Look, this business, Many people have become, I mean, Jerry Brassfield has been, has been the head of this company for 62 years. He knows what this business is. Charlie Bolton has been doing this business for more than 46 years. He knows how this business is built. You as a distributor, the thing you need to do is get started, learn from the people who've been successful. Don't try and invent the wheel. The biz our business is very simple, but it's not easy because um, people join the business and they think that because they have been successful in previous businesses or whatever career they come from, that there is a shortcut. You know, if there was a shortcut in this business, everybody would have found it. There's no shortcut in this business. Just follow the system. It's a very simple system. Writing a name list, contacting people, explaining the business, making a follow-up, selling products to customers, and that's how you build a team. The third challenge you're going to face in this business is rejection. And uh, I think that the way to overcome rejection in this business is don't stop prospecting because sometimes when you stop prospecting and somebody has said no, guess the thoughts that are remaining in your mind is the, what the people who have said no is affecting you. So the way to deal with rejection is you need to constantly um, prospect people so that you don't dwell too much on the people who are, you know, think about this. Those of you who are world team members, when you go on stage or you're a director, when you go on stage, do you remember the people who told, me, told you no? No, you don't. What you remember and you're joyful about is your team or the people who said yes and I share with, with sharing with you the joy of going on stage. Okay, so rejection is a tough thing to deal with, but if you've overcome rejection, you are going to be very successful in this business. The fourth challenge you're going to encounter in this business is called the greener pasture syndrome. What is a greener pasture syndrome? Is that when you join the business and the business becomes a bit tough, you want to look elsewhere. Well, uh, the greener pasture syndrome is, is anyway in life. But what people who look on the fence to a greener pasture syndrome, think about this. If you have got a compound and you climb on your wall and you see somebody's green lawn, it looks immaculate. You say, well, I wish I had that kind of lawn. But what you forget is that the person who has a lawn like that took care of it they put fertilizer, they put, they put super grow, they mowed the lawn, they cut it neatly, they spent work to do it. So if you want to have a similar lawn, do what the people who have greener lawns do. In our business, if you want to succeed, it's very simple. Talk to people, talk to prospects, talk to customers, keep building the business, you will have a successful business. So a greener pasture syndrome is very common where people when the challenge comes, they want to look at other things. And the last challenge that you face in this business is poor relationships. You need to be very good and at maintaining good relationship with your distributors and customers, okay? This is just an indication of a careless mind. People who are get easily discouraged. They watch news, they have negative friends, they can't dwell or concentrate on challenges. But if you look at their dreams, their past successes, income producing activities, affirmations, they spend little time on those things. You need to do the opposite. You need to master your mind. How do you master your mind? You master your mind 
building a dream chart so that you put it in a place where you see it every day. You need to recall past successes because when you recall past successes, it builds your self-confidence. You need to concentrate on income producing activities and then you need affirmations. Affirmations are things you repeat to yourself on what you'd like your life to look at, okay? And you minimize the negative news, minimize negative friends, challenges, you don't think about them, you just learn from them. If you master your mind, your road to success will be much easier. So for those of you who are new, I'd like to give you a, a, something called a 90 day challenge. If you're new in the business, you joined in December, you joined in January, or you're old in the business, I want to encourage you to spend the next three months doing the business very intensely. Why is that important? Because from the, the, the re success is a habit, all right? If success is a habit, it means something that you practice all the time becomes a habit. Something you, an action that you commit all the time becomes a habit and that's what leads you to success. Motivation puts you in the road to success. The habit keeps you on that path. So I'd like to recommend the following 90 day challenge for those of you who want to take it up. That is for February, March and April. January is ending in a few days, next week. Phase one, negotiate with your family and friends that you want to concentrate on the business to make it success, a success. Why? Because it's important that you have a good atmosphere at home. Create your own story. What does that mean? that you need to learn how to tell your story so that people can get captivated with it. For example, if you're new in the business, you say, I've just started a new business and the business is called Project One Million. Our goal is to have a million distributors distributing health supplements on the African continent. I would like you to join with me in the business. If not, well, then, then this is not for you. Create your own story, make it attractive. It, it has to be some, something that when people hear, they say, I want to get involved in this project. Set goals. For example, I want to earn dash amount of money by the end of April, 2021. Identify a group in your team who want to commit to this 90 days. All right. Phase two of this project is plan every weekend what you're going to do the next week. For example, today is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday, either Friday evening or Saturday morning, take an hour. Take an hour and plan what you're going to do the next week. Which prospects are you going to see? Which uh, customers are you going to talk to? How many are you going to, to talk to? Find a goal to expose the business to five people daily. Three prospects, two customers. You need to get in income producing activities on a daily basis. And then monitor your activity at the end of the week. Why do you need to monitor? Because you'll be, be able to know if you are effective or not. And then as time goes on, add more people to your group. As you add more people to your group, then you, need, you see success comes when a large group of people are doing similar things. There is power and momentum in it. And then be accountable to each other. Share stories of what you're doing at the end of the week. The reason that is important is your story is going to inspire somebody to become better than what they have been doing. So get a group of people at the end of the week, share your story with each other. That is going to give some people a lot of confidence. And if you do this, you will find that you are, if you do that, you're going to find that your business will start to grow and it will start to build momentum. If you want to succeed in this business, take advantage of momentum. Take advantage of 90 days that you're going to want to concentrate on the, on the business and build it. And with time, you will find that the business takes a life of its own. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I appreciate you taking time to listen to um, uh, our sharing what the business has done. I want to hand over to Paul to close our meeting call. Uh, thank you so much, Pascal. I hope you can be able to hear me. Yes, I can. Uh, thank you. So I was also having a challenge with the network, and I'm happy our distributors and guests today, they have been able to, to bear with us. I, sometimes technology can take another path, 
But I want to thank you, Pascal and Betty, for taking us through an amazing session tonight. And I believe that our guests who are logged in today, you have been able to get some information, something that you can be able to use and uh, continue to build your business. So mine is just to remind you that uh, month end is next week on Tuesday. We have a weekend to be able to build and do a lot of more business. So I just want to wish you all the best as you prepare for month end. So for me, uh, Betty and Pascal, I just want to say thank you so much for logging in. Uh, good night and bye bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Pascal. Good night. Bye bye. Thanks, Paul.